Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International with Samar Ajjawi. The Representative Council Speaker Ahmed Al Musallam affirmed that the inauguration of the Bahrain Declaration in Rome affirms the civilized approach of His Majesty the King that is based on peaceful coexistence. He added that the declaration adds to the humanitarian initiatives of the kingdom, which are based on peace and tolerance, and is reflected in the historical visit of Pope Francis to the kingdom. The Speaker praised the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in supporting the efforts of the international community in promoting the values of peace and coexistence. He added that His Majesty the King enhanced the status of the Kingdom in this regard, especially through the inauguration of the Declaration of the Kingdom. And the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali as Saleh, affirmed that the inauguration of the Bahrain Declaration in Rome affirms the civilized approach of His Majesty the King based on peaceful coexistence. He added that the Declaration adds to the humanitarian initiatives of the Kingdom which are based on peace and tolerance, which is reflected in the visit of Pope Francis to the Kingdom. The Chairman praised the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in supporting the efforts of the international community in spreading the values of peace and coexistence. He added that His Majesty the King enhanced the status of the Kingdom in this regard, especially through the inauguration of the Declaration of the Kingdom. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment, Nawaf bin Muhammad al maouda paid a visit to the Dubai courts where he was welcomed by their Director General, Tar Shaid al-Mansouri. The Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowment and his accompanying delegation were updated on the litigation procedures at the Dubai courts and their digital applications. They praised the strong historical fraternal relations between both countries and peoples and their steady growth in all fields. Bilateral cooperation and ways of boosting them in the judicial field were also discussed. The Bahraini Moroccan Joint Supreme Committee held its fifth session while celebrating the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. The committee discussed the close historical fraternal relations between Bahrain and Morocco and the advanced level of bilateral cooperation in all fields. It also discussed enhancing cooperation in various fields and stressed the importance of developing economic trade and investment relations. The two sides reviewed political and security de development challenges and crises facing the Arab countries and their repercussions on security and stability in the region, stressing the importance of enhancing joint Arab action. The committee condemned the unfair human rights uh, reports and decisions affecting the independence of their judiciary. The Bahraini side renewed its support for the territorial integrity of Morocco and the efforts made by Morocco to find a realistic political solution based on consensus. The two sides renewed their firm and supportive position on the Palestinian cause calling for the need to reach a permanent and comprehensive political solution that guarantees the Palestinian people the right to establish their independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. The Bahraini side commended the continuous efforts made by the Moroccan monarch, the chairman of the Al-Quds Committee, in defending the holy city of Al-Quds al-Sharif. The two sides also discussed global developments and challenges, their impacts on international peace and security, and economic impact on the region. The Bahraini side praised the pioneering role of the Moroccan monarch in consolidating the foundations of sustainable development in the African continent and strengthening the foundations of peace, security, and stability. The two sides agreed to hold their sixth session in Morocco in 2024. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Azayani, attended the reception held by the Indian Embassy in Bahrain on the occasion of Republic Day. On this occasion, the Minister congratulated the Indian Ambassador, Payush Shiravastav, the Indian community in the Kingdom, and the government and people of India, expressing Bahrain's pride in the historical relations between the two friendly countries and the constructive joint cooperation in various fields. He affirmed the Kingdom's keenness to develop these relations in implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King and with the follow-up of the government headed by the, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He praised the continuous joint cooperation and coordination in various economic and development fields and in regional and international forums to serve the common interests. The Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration Europe has been inaugurated during a ceremony held in Rome, the Republic of Italy. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence unveiled the covenant in the presence of ambassadors, diplomats, and officials, in addition to 100 students enrolled in the King Hamad Chair for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence. The Italian Republic hosts the King Hamad Chair for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence, which was launched at Spianza University in 2018. 
Addressing the ceremony, Bahrain's ambassador to Italy, Dr. Nasser Mohammed Al Belushi, said that the launch of the declaration in Europe from Italy amid critical international circumstances represents a defining moment for promoting all forms of peaceful coexistence, as stated in the document. Special Envoy for Interreligious Dialogue at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation in Italy, Dr. Andrea Benzo, said he was pleased that the Kingdom of Bahrain has chosen the Italian Republic to start launching the document of the Declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Europe. He stated that interfaith dialogue can enhance cooperation between the spectrum of society and protect against falling in the cauldron of extremism and racism, which negatively affect the freedom of belief and the guarantee of human rights. The founder and president of the Abrahamic Convention Institute in Berlin, Armin Lechschit, said it was delighted to participate in the inauguration, noting that the openness of Bahrain and the consolidation of dialogue and peaceful coexistence have enhanced the sense of humanity in society. The vice chair of the board of trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Betsy Matheson, stated that Bahrain's declaration has been praised by His Holiness Pope Francis of the Vatican, who praised the declaration and quoted it during his historic visit to the kingdom in November 2022 which reinforces the importance of the document as a global roadmap for peace and coexistence. She expressed pride at working with such prestigious partners as La Spianza University in Rome, the King Hamad Programme in the UK, in partnership with the Universities of Oxford and Cambridge, the UN Institute for Training and Research, the Office of the Special Envoy of US to monitor and combat anti-Semitism, the Brazilian Ministry of Women, Family and Human Rights. During the inauguration ceremony, 100 students affiliated with the King Hamad Chair for Freedom of Religion and Peaceful Coexistence were honored for their participation in the Ignorance is the Enemy of Peace Forum. On the sideline of the inauguration of the Declaration of the King Hamad of, bah King of Bahrain in Europe, the Kingdom of Bahrain in Europe was a conference held under the title Understanding Religions and New Challenges for Education. Participants expressed their thanks to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for His Majesty's initiatives, with the aim of spreading peace among various sects, religions and cultures. I really would like to appreciate His Majesty uh, King Hamid and His Holiness Pope Francis for the initiative. Actually, you know, I would like to say that they become the voice of the people who are uh, on the ground reality, because for me, uh, I am living among Muslims. So we create peace among each other. And they are the people who are inspiring us, inspiring both the great religions. And uh, we really pray for them, pray for the initiative, pray for peace, pray for brotherhood among both the religions and uh, among all the religions in the world. I'm here today with other students and leaders from religions. Um, and I was so stuck for uh, the Bahrain Declaration, because um, uh, it underlines the freedom of choice. I think that is so important in this, uh, yes, in our world. So we have the responsibility to foster youth with, um, yes, through the dialogue. Um, best if uh, it's uh, between different uh, cultural and religious uh, roots. That it is important that we understand dialogue is the heartbeat of unity in today's society. The presenters we have presented so far have given papers that are articulating well the principles that we should look into today's world pertaining the global challenges that we have towards attaining peaceful world that exists. We're very honored to be invited to this conference on such an important declaration, which uh, underpin all the same values that we carry on with our uh, Buddhist practice, but also uh, with the, uh, this Buddhism in action, which is uh, uh, expressed uh, mainly in Italy through uh, um, exhibitions. And uh, we are now about to launch this new exhibition on anti-nuclear disarmament. It's a great initiative uh, by the organizers, you know, to organize this um, uh, discussion on uh, interreligious dialogue. I think it's what we need at the moment with so much conflicts going on, um, religious conflicts going on as well. I think we, we have 
something that we need to fight uh, as, as, as one, as brothers and sisters, and that's climate change. We don't need to fight each other uh, because of religion. You know? So it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, cause. The Kingdom of Bahrain, represented by the Ministry of the Interior, participated in the United Nations Ad Hoc Committee meeting to draft a comprehensive international agreement on combating the use of information and communication technology for criminal purposes. The meeting was held at the United Nations office in Vienna. The director of the Anti-Cybercrime Department at the General Directorate for Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security headed the Ministry of Interior delegation participating in the meeting. The agenda of the fourth session of the committee's work included reviewing the third consultation report of the committee's work, in addition to examining the unified negotiating document on general provisions and the provisions related to criminalization and procedural measures.